Have you been looking for an entry-level trail bike, but you just haven't found the right one yet? Well, look no further than this Polygon Siskiyou T7. This thing is a great entry-level trail bike that comes in at a low price of only $2,000, US which is very cheap for a full suspension mountain bike. This thing is loaded with features found on bikes several thousands of dollars more than this one. Polygon is able to manufacture bikes way cheaper than the competitors due to they ship it straight to you and you assemble it instead of having a dealership that actually sells you the bike. Putting your bike together by yourself is going to allow you to gain some respect for the bike and also take some pride in putting it together yourself. So I think it's a great way to start out with your bike and really hit the ground running with how to actually work on your bike a little bit, as well as getting out and riding this thing. And guys, if you're looking for an assembly video on how to assemble this bike, also check out my video on my channel on how to do that as well. It's very easy. You only need a couple tools and the tools are actually provided in the kit that they give you. Buying from Box Online is also very easy. If you're looking for an easy process to go about buying a bike, all you have to do is click the mouse a couple times and this thing will show up at your doorstep in just a matter of, of a couple weeks, depending on availability. All right, for the specs breakdown, let's get going right now. We're not gonna do a complete in-depth review of this thing. We're just gonna break down some of the specifications and show you what you're gonna be getting if you were to purchase this mountain bike. Okay, starting at the frame. This frame is a 6061 alloy ALX aluminum frame. The total bike weighing in at 34.4 pounds, and this is for the 22 version. The 2021 model also weighed about the same. This does have a tapered head tube, which is gonna allow you to be able to upgrade this thing to many different types of tapered forks in the future if you would like. Also, this bike comes with boost through axles, front and rear. Up front, we have a 15 by 110 boost axle. Nice through axle there. And in the back, we have a 12 by 148 boost spacing. Really beefy through axles there as well. This does have a threaded bottom bracket. You can see there, threaded bottom bracket. Does have internal cable routing completely through the bike. Very nice as far as the fit and finish on this bike. Overall, this bike has a very modern trail geometry to it. You can see the slackness of this head tube angle. The wheel is really pushed out in front quite a bit. Also very short chain stay back here where that wheel is getting under you a little bit more, allows for a more stable ride at higher speeds. This thing also lends itself to be very playful on the trail. You can really get the wheel up and out of the way if you need to, as far as doing manuals. Wheelies are also fun on this bike too. So the bikes do come in a wide range of sizes, anywhere from small to medium with a 27 and a half inch wheel. This particular one is a 27 and a half inch wheel with the medium size frame, as you can see here. For me, I am 5'9", 185 pounds, and these 27 and a half inch wheels with the medium frame, the standover is just perfect for me. I have around a 32 inch inseam, and the standover height is just perfect for me on this. And I couldn't imagine, honestly, going to the 29-inch wheels. These are just perfect for my size. The 29er versions also can come in a medium frame through extra large frame. And we'll talk about some of the different specifications as far as the different frame sizes go. Because there are some different options as far as the fork and the rear shock travel goes. Now that we've gave a brief overview of the geometry features on this bike, let's start breaking down the suspension components. This does have a RockShox Recon Boost Fork. So we do have the boost spacing once again. It has the through axle 
Overall, this is a very beefy fork. I really like it. The stanchions are nice and thick, and it just has a really nice look to it. It does have blacked out stanchions here. Do get kind of like a an oxidized look to them, which you may or may not be into that. But this does have a really solid brace. The brace material looks to be very solid. You can see it does look very thick and supported on the rear here. The fork seals look really nice. This is the, where the Schrader valve is to air up your fork. And as well as the lockout feature that this bike has. This does have full lockout. And then it also has various settings in between where you can dial it in to your compression of choice. It does down have, at the bottom of the fork itself. It does have a rebound adjustment, very poor quality in my opinion. So it, that is the rebound adjustment. Doesn't look that great to me. It's just a little piece of plastic that you twist to adjust the rebound. Not a very solid piece of equipment if you ask me i would have liked to had the red valve like normally to where you can adjust that that just looks like something that would break off very easily so that is one con with this bike that i've already found see me bouncing up and down on this front suspension has plenty of travel and you can see it's very usable you can tell from the slow-mo clip that I have, it works pretty well too. So we did say that getting the different wheel sizes would get you different size options as far as the fork travel and the rear shock travel goes. So the 29er models have 140 millimeters of fork travel and the 27 and a half inch wheels like this one has actually get you 150 mils of travel for that front fork. It does have a solo air spring, which actually gives you that plush feel. And the lockout to me isn't a full lockout. So it, it gives you a little bit of stiffness, but it's not fully locked out. There is still probably about an inch of plushness in there. But I kind of like that feature because if I'm just out casually riding, you know, maybe some gravel roads or something like that, I'm still not going to get beat up because that thing is too stiff. So it gives you enough plushness to actually still go down different types of terrain without getting beat up too bad. Okay, moving to the rear shock here. This is a nice Rock Shocks Deluxe Select Plus. You see this thing's a little bit dirty. We've been out riding it quite a bit. Uh, but this thing is very tunable. I really like it. It has a very consistent feel as far as the dampening goes. And it really feels like you have a coil spring back here. It's that smooth. The 29ers come with 135 mils of travel. And the 27 and a half inch tires will give you 140 mils of travel. So once again, with this bike, if you do get the smaller wheels, which kind of matches kind of what an enduro rider would have, it's going to get you a little bit more travel in the long run and like i said i think this is just a perfect size wheel for this bike i feel like maybe a 29er would be good if you're looking at more rollover but as far as you know being able to have playfulness on the trails and stuff i think this 27 and a half inch is perfect so this does have rebound adjustment with this red knob also does feature a lockout which this is in a fully locked out position here we can switch it to just the normal setting where we have full use of this rear shock. Really cool, all you have to do is just reach down real quick, flip this on or off when you're on the trail and it's very useful and easy. You can see right there, it has a little picture of which position. Okay, down here, actually going to set the sag, this is actually a really cool feature. You know, you can even use the O-ring or maybe you don't even have to. If you're sitting on the bike with your gear, setting the sag for this thing, you can literally look down and see the end of the shock housing here and where it relates to these numbers. And you're gonna be able to set your sag. This one is set for 25% sag and it just works really good for me so far. This is the other side of this rear shock. It does say the max PSI in this rear shock can be 325 PSI. Here's the Schrader valve to actually fill this up. 
And overall, this is a really nice offering from RockShox. So speaking of the last piece of suspension here, this is their Fox Bar Linkage. It is a one-piece unibody, which utilizes a one-piece bridge. And it even says one on it, it's kind of funny. But this thing is really solid, and Polygon says this is gonna reduce frame weight and overall stiffness of the bike and improve pedal efficiency when going up hills, and it's gonna eliminate that pedal bog as a whole. The fittings look really nice in the bushings. I don't really see any issues with this. People give it a lot of hate just because it is a one piece, but I do believe it only adds to reducing the weight and the stiffness as a whole. Moving on to the drivetrain. Drivetrain is very nice on this bike. It does come with a one by 12 Dior drivetrain, which Dior's are just known for being a very solid set. It does have the Shimano crank arms up front, and these are the hollow type, the hollow bottom bracket. We'll uh, give you a shot of this other crank arm on the left side. Really like this design. If you've ever had the square tapered crank arms, you know they fall off very regularly and it's just a pain. These will not give you that issue. These are really solid. Overall, I like this gear set. It looks really nice. Chain ring looks nice. Uh, it does have a pretty thin chain. You see, we're, we've been getting this thing pretty dirty. See, looking at the rear derailleur here. This does have the option to where you can flip this lever. So if you're just out casually riding, the rear derailleur isn't locked in. And if you don't want it to bounce or anything like that if you're out doing heavy trail riding you don't want a lot of that chain slap this right here really stiffens up that mechanism in that rear derailleur and you're not going to have all that chain slap now the chain stay guard is super nice this is one of the nicest chain stay guards i've ever seen i think on a bike very thick piece of rubber here even has polygon written on it but that is just super beefy looks really nice on the bike so being able to just have a 1x12 system really offers you the simplicity of not having to mess with multiple gear shift levers up here on the controls you only have this one that you have to deal with okay moving on to the brakes for the brakes we do have tektro hd m735 brakes the rear has a two piston and then in the front we have a four piston and these do offer plenty of stopping power. We do have 180 mil rotors front and rear, which is a decent size for starting out. And I've seen, I've seen a lot of people online wonder how to take these off because they look like they're just pressed on. You can't really take the rotors off. You can see that. But this right here is actually on a spline piece. So that will just come off as a whole piece. And then if you needed one from Polygon or another manufacturer, that actually just gets tightened back on onto that spline. So very solid system, actually. Uh, people just didn't know what they were talking about. But overall, these Tektros look very nice. They have a nice color scheme on them. Once again, 180 mil rotors in the back, but right up to those nice Shimano hubs. The controls, these things look very solid. Nice Tektro branded brake levers. And one cool thing about this, if you're adding new bars or grips or anything like that, and you need to actually take these off, this right here, can actually be taken off without sliding them off the bar. So if you've ever done that, you know you scratch the crap out of your bars. All you do is loosen this up, and this actually, this whole piece just goes right out of the way, and you can take it right off. Same goes through this side. Really like that feature on these brakes. 
So we just talked about the brakes. Now we're gonna move into one of the best features on this bike, and that is this dropper post. This dropper post is a Transx branded dropper post, and this thing works awesome. I haven't had any issues out of this. It's very smooth. It actuates when I need it to, and I haven't had any issues with it. So some of the specs on this dropper post, for small and medium frames, you're gonna get 150 mils of travel for that post as well as the large through extra large is gonna give you 170 mils of travel to actuate that dropper post. And to tighten down the clamp, it is just an Allen key. You're not having a quick disconnect, quick release here, but that is pretty cool. It gets it out of the way so you don't snag that thing on your pants or your shorts when you're out riding on the trails. So the dropper post works pretty good. Moving up into the Entity branded saddle, which is a smaller saddle. As a whole, this is a very short saddle, but it's also kind of wide at the back. But this thing is pretty nice. It has a cool design on top and it seems pretty sturdy. Okay, so looking at the wheels, the wheels are an Entity branded double wall alloy wheel and these are pretty wide to accommodate these big schwab blade tires these things are 2.6 and i'll tell you just from experience i did not expect these tires to be this wide they are 2.6s and they are just beefy they are awesome if you're out on the trail or doing some downhill stuff but i will tell you these things have a lot of rolling resistance when you're on the road it almost seems like you're driving a monster truck down the road. They just have so much grip and they're just so massive that if you're looking for rolling efficiency on the road, I would definitely suggest changing out your wheels and tires because these things are just massive, but awesome for trail use. So they do have 35 mils of internal width, mudded up to Shimano hubs. See the Shimano brand on the hubs there. It does have the micro spline free hub in the back to accommodate that cassette. Just a really nice overall hub. Can't complain on that. Very nice features at a pretty low price point for a full suspension bike. These 2.6 Schwable Hans Domp tires are just awesome though. I couldn't ask for anything else on this bike. And honestly, these will probably be the tires of choice if I ever have to buy another set. I'll probably just go with these again. These are just a really great tire option. And they are tubeless ready. That is one thing about this bike. I was lucky enough to actually get these Schwable tires. I guess this bike does ship often with another brand of tires that aren't as good as this one. So depending on availability at Polygon's manufacturing plant, you may or may not get the Schwable tires. Okay, buttoning up some of the last pieces of the bike here. We do have an Entity branded handlebar up here, and these are 780 mils in length. Pretty flat bar as a whole. It does have a slight bend in it, but they are pretty beefy, and these are alloy. Butted up to some Entity branded. These actually are lock-ons. You can see it up in there. These are lock-on. They're not the best filling. And I think the ribs right here actually do them less justice than good. It's really not that comfortable. So I'm gonna be doing an upgrade video on this bike. And these are gonna be one of the first things to go. But these are actually lock-on, which I was kind of surprised to see. But overall, not too bad. It does have an entity branded stem. I really like this stem. It's a short stem. So it's just right there above the steer tube. And I really like that. I don't like a long stem for the type of trail riding I do. It does have a bunch of different spacers here. If you needed to adjust the height of the stem, you can take those spacers off, put them on top of the stem, and then tighten down the stem clamp there. Very easy to do. And the headset, FSA branded headset. Haven't had any issues with that. Yeah, and overall, seems to be very smooth operation from that headset we talked about the saddle a little bit but it is entity branded as well 
pretty much everything on this bike. To keep the price down, they have their own proprietary parts from Polygon, and that is those entity branded items. Uh, the pedals are, I'm assuming, are also entity branded. These are actually alloy pedals, surprisingly, but they're not that high quality, but they will get the job done until you can replace them. And they actually have the studs. That is pretty cool. You can replace these since they are alloy. You can replace those studs if they do wear down. So that is a pretty good offering here. If you're looking for not having to replace anything, you actually wouldn't have to on this bike. And this is a lot better than getting those plastic junk pedals that most bikes come with. Overall, I am super happy with the purchase of this Polygon Siskiyou T7. This is an awesome overall trail bike if you're looking to get into trail riding for the first time you're not looking to go spend five or six thousand dollars on a trail bike this is going to get you out and about it's going to get you out there on the trail having fun and that is the main thing you know you can get out there with your buddies and still perform and learn how to ride a mountain bike on the trail without having to break the bank and go into this sport you know with several thousands of dollars into it like I said, this thing only comes in at 2000 US dollars. I'm not sure what it is for the other countries, but for that price, you're getting a lot of features that other bikes are not gonna have at this price point. And honestly, this is one of the cheapest full suspension trail bikes that you're gonna find on the market right now. All right, guys, if you like this video, please help me out on the channel by hitting the like button. Also subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. We're gonna be doing a lot of different ride videos on this Siskiyou, also upgrade videos. And if you're looking to purchase one and wanna know how to put it together, also head over to my channel page to see how to put this thing together. It's very simple and you can also do it on your own and it doesn't take that much time. Okay, thanks for watching the video and I'll catch you guys later.